Hi, this is Maury Moreland Morrison, here to tell you GEICO has more than just great savings. Much more. Yes, while GEICO could help you rack up more moolah faster than you can say metamorphosis, they've also been the fastest growing auto insurer for more than 10 years. That's more like it. Furthermore, GEICO has fast and friendly claim service. That might seem like an oxymoron, but it's not. All the more reason to say no other auto insurer has more more than GEICO. GEICO. Expect great savings and a whole lot more. Welcome to the war room. We got Ted, Kill, Jimmy, PJ, B. Austin, the hot block commander. How you want to end up one or two hour show and keep the brain running with the printers and talk sports on a national level. Roll with the topics, sort of like the rubber. When it's game time, they like the fad five door and prime time. Sports conglomerates speak their minds a little bit. For sports medicine and sports veterans and great. The 4 for 26, so the war ain't can wait. It's the war room with five nights at the round table. Five silly guys, diversified and educated. Of course we are. Of course. What up, everybody out there? We hope you're having a great holiday season, War Room family. Of course, you are once again live in the War Room, brought to you by War Room Sports and the War Room Sports Podcast Network. I'm your boy, Devin McMillan. I'm at the last roundtable of 2016 with my brother, Jimmy the Blueprint. Man, y'all better just keep it locked right here for the next two hours as we discuss the top sports stories of 2016 and a whole lot more. And if you want to holler at us throughout the show... You know the drill. Just join us right now in the JW Philly Realty chat room at blogtalkradio.com slash the war room. Or you can join us on Facebook or Twitter at War Room Sports. You can also call us directly when we open up the Digital Extreme Tech Hotline. That number is 323-410-0012. Look, quick note to the greatest audience in sports. You guys, you know, can listen to the War Room Sports Podcast Network all throughout the week. And on the network, you can listen to shows such as The Broad Street Line with Roy and Chris, Tissue and the Tape Hip Hop Show with Phil and Savad, John Appetit for all you foodies out there with the Burtons, uh, No Look Pass for you NBA heads with Frank and Andy, On the Couch with the Wilsons if you love to watch TV and if you love going to the movies, After Further Review with the Mayor for a whole gamut of sports talk, and a whole lot more. Just visit warroomsports.com, click on the War Room Sports Podcast Network tab. Uh, to be exact, it says WRS Podcast Network. Uh, or you can go to our free mobile app and click the network tab there. Jimmy, what's going on, bro? We are almost out of 2016. We still breathing. A whole lot of I'm other here. people aren't. Yo, how 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 you gonna remember this year? Yo, man. <sighs> so many things have happened this year. I, I was actually thinking about that uh, overall this year. Um, cause. A lot of this year has been terrible, but I really was like looking back at all these deaths, right? 2016, I don't want no beef. I got a couple days left. I don't want no problems. But some of these were some old ass people, for one. And for two, some of y'all on the internet got to stop like looking for D and E list celebrities that have passed just to try to prove your point about how bad 2016 is. You know what I'm saying? Um, But in terms of sports, it's crazy because I'm going to remember the Cubs and Cavs just because of. historically how those teams have performed and the fact that they were able to get off the schneid and um, bring right. those chips home. Um, man, so, so much in the world of sports, but in the outside of sports, uh, it seems like we're getting further and further apart in terms of race relations. Um, yeah. in, in, in terms of uh, just as a country, we're becoming more divided. Like, you know, it looks like we're headed for another civil war in the next five or 10 years. Um, so I remember this year for a lot of things. Colin Kaepernick, the hatred that came with what he did. I mean, there's so many things to remember, but if I had to just think of one thing that I remember this for, uh, that's kind of difficult, man, because it's so much. Yeah, it is difficult. It is difficult. I mean, it, it was a very diverse year. Like, we did lose a lot of people in sports and entertainment. And shit, shoot, a lot of people lost people personally. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, that's no difference in any other year. Yo, I personally but, have been to more funerals this year than probably the last, like, maybe 10 years combined. I go into several funerals, like, wow. and, wow. you know, you know, just just in general, like, it's crazy, man. I have family members die, just, like, friends, people I know. Um, well, everybody out there, whoever you, you know, look to up above, if you, if you about that life, I guess your God was, 
down thousand this year. <laughs> Yo, shout lying. out, shout out, shout out to, uh, shout out to my brother PJ, man, because uh, you know we was in his wedding last year at the end of the year, and part of that was we got suits that we got to keep, and um, I put right. good use to that joint this year. So like, shout out to him. For the, you know, <laughs> Your wedding and funeral I, suit. Yo, no, it? but. It, it it did seem amazing how every other day in 2016, like celebrities and 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 the big part about it because you're right, a lot of people were old. Those the, you know when you're 90, and you're in, yeah. in your 80s, I don't really put that on the year. I don't put that on 2016. Some of those deaths, you know, that's just Father Tom. That's not the 2016 Reaper. Um, yeah. But it just seems like, especially for guys like us, when you know, we were children in in the eighties. I would say, you know, that's our our decade, our, our coming of age. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I guess nineties would be coming of age since we were, you know, high school and college in the nineties, but 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 our you know, we were eighties babies as they call yeah. them. And it's and it kinda seems like a lot of people that died in twenty sixteen were damn near icons to us, whether they were that popular in real life or not, you know, to us. And the stuff that we did and listened to no, and absolutely. watched back in the eighties, it seems like a lot of Prince. those people were kicking the bucket. Yeah, you got Prince, you know who who's gone. I mean, and then not just twenty sixteen. You look at a lot of the music we listened to back then. A lot of them people are gone. I'm talking about the people who were tops in their genre, like you know Prince, Michael, Whitney, Luther. You know all the you know only Damn. Prince is twenty sixteen, but it just. It makes you feel like you're getting old when everybody from, you know, the yeah. generation when you were growing up, when everybody's passing away. But if you look at these people's ages, they shouldn't be passing away. Yo, and so shout out to, we really uh, shouldn't rest in feel peace, that old. Say, rest in peace, shall <laughs> I say, to George Michael, um, because, you know, yeah. I, love I George forgot, Michael I ain't gonna hold music. you. I forgot, because <laughs> I went um, on title and they, like, they created a playlist in honor of him, and I, like, put it on this morning. I listen right, to music and I get dressed and whatnot. I was like, yo, I, I, hits, for, like, I forgot. I forgot. Yeah. Wham, the Wham days was fire. Careless Whisper, uh, yo, Faith, my favorite, John. They can love me. <laughs> hey, yo, Careless yo, Whisper is absolute fire. And teacher. Yo, yo. <laughs> yo, but the funny thing is, like it's one of them Jones where I ain't going front. Like I did forget because like who who randomly says I'm gonna go listen to some George. I just don't do it. But uh, I put it I on, do. you know, just because I listen to George. Cause... Admittedly, I listen to George Michael and I listen to um, Hall and Oates a lot. Yo, I, love <laughs> I don't Hall know why, but I listen to. Yo, I love Hall and Oates. But part, part of that is Philly pride too, though, because that's white soul from Philly. But I bangs with Hall yeah. and Oates and also Michael McDonald. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Hall and Oates die. I might go to the funeral. One of them Yo. girls die. Michael McDonald um, was there work too. But um Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. So twenty sixteen man is, is is a crazy year overall for just like just like culture in general, sports culture, pop culture is it's kinda crazy, man. Like and I know the Phil shout out to Phil uh Phil Maddock, a tissue in the tape, because he always makes this joke and then part of me starting to believe it, like all the craziness happened because in order for the Cubs and the Cavs to like win chips, like the world had to be turned off his axis and, and then yeah, all kinds of it's kinda like <laughs> The world had to be like the bizarro world, so yeah, like we living in bizarre. Yo, but but we made those like same type of jokes all throughout this election season when Donald Trump's bid got more serious. We mm-hmm. talked a lot about Back to the Future. We talked a lot about yeah. Biff Tannen, and what's the whole thing in Back to the Future and why Biff Tannen became rich and all of that because. Somebody went back and messed up the space-time continuum, so the line branched off, and this was an alternate 2016 that we're living in, where Biff Tannen (laughs) is now the president-elect of the United States of America. You know, a bunch of people who probably shouldn't be their time to die passed away. The Cleveland Cavaliers are NBA champions. The, The Chicago Cubs are, you know, World Series champions. Man, Phil, he was on to something, man. It, yeah, it, it had to be like an alternate like, reality. One of these whack ass football teams that's going to sneak into the playoffs, like the uh, Falcons or something. Uh, look at the Raiders. <laughs> and then yeah. they lost their quarterback. They still mess around and win. Hey, and Scott, you know. Y'all season over, Aki. Stick you know what, though? That's 2017, though. So uh, their luck probably ran out. 
How about that? Twenty sixteen. Like everything was one. flipped upside down and the Raiders went into the playoffs like the number two seed and then the year is gonna the calendar is gonna switch and then it, their luck is gonna got you, got you. Yeah. Yo Remember remember yo, and, and uh Back to the Future like, when then, then the he had, was gonna win. He had to get, get back the before his, uh, everything back right. <laughs> but remember he had to get back he had to get everything right before his uh, brothers and sisters faded out of that photo. Yeah. The Raiders about to fade out that photo. Pretty much, yo. And it's, and it's a shame. They're going to get us back right, yo. They're going to get us back right. All right. So, well, look, this is what we're going to do, man. We're going to reminisce on 2016 all throughout the show. But before we do that, we're going to talk about what happened this week while we're on the grind. So, Jimmy, man, tell these people what happened in this crazy week. Why they were on the grind before we Absolutely. talk about the whole year in review. <laughs> and why you were on the grind is brought to you by DirecTV. If you'd like a better TV experience than cable has to offer, which includes the NFL Sunday ticket, here's what you do. You go to our website. That's warroomsports.com. Click on the DirecTV logo and get you a better TV experience at a discounted Warroom Sports sign-up rate. Listen, you know we love sports, and if you love sports, you got to have DirecTV. Bottom line. Now, let's talk about what happened this past week while you were on the grind. A lot of craziness happened, you know, um, which is why this is one of our favorite, uh, you know, uh, segments of the show. Let's talk about Mike Tomlin. Uh, Terry Bradshaw made some comments about Mike Tomlin saying he wasn't a great coach and he was a cheerleader and so on and so forth. But Mike Tomlin fired back, um, and he spit some bars at Terry Bradshaw. So I got a Mike Tomlin 2-1, nobody back. But what he did was he, he basically said uh, he grew up he a spit Dallas bars man. that a lot of people probably <laughs> wouldn't understand. So you yeah, over explain. the head bars. <laughs> over the head bars. He said that he's, he grew up a Dallas Cowboys fan, specifically Hollywood Henderson. And for those uh, football historians, because I didn't see it live, but I watch enough NFL films to catch the joke. Hollywood Henderson made that joke going into the Super Bowl that uh, Terry Bradshaw was so dumb he couldn't spell cat that he spotted him the C and the T. <laughs> so, <laughs> so that was a little, that was a so, subliminal yeah, shot at, it at was Terry. Definitely a subliminal shot. To say I grew up a Dallas Cowboys fan, particularly Hollywood Henderson, when Hollywood Henderson has the most famous Terry Bradshaw burn in the history of the game. Um, it definitely was, you know, it was a clever shot. I think Terry Bradshaw and his criticism of Mike Tomlin got a little too personal. You know what I mean? Exactly. And the way he yeah, talked about yeah. him kind of makes you think he looks down on Mike Tomlin. It's one thing to say, I don't think somebody's a good coach or they might be a little overrated as a coach. But he went so far as to say, like, what does he do? I mean, he's a good cheerleader guy on the sideline. Yeah, like, I, I, I think that borders on unnecessary. So if you want to throw bars, then I guess he got to throw bars back. It definitely wasn't necessary because, like, the back. fact of the matter is, man, Mike Tomlin is one of the most successful coaches in football. Say what you want to say about him. And I also know that if Mike Tomlin lost his job tomorrow, he can get a job somewhere in this league, like, the next day, without question. But – um, and the thing that I found interesting is, like, when you look at, like, Steelers players, they say that um, Terry Bradshaw is not really involved in the organization. Like, they say, like, you know, um, Joe Green and a lot of the older Steelers, like, they're there giving them, like, you know, guidance and talking to the newer players and, like, being a part of the quote-unquote family. And they said Terry is never there, but he throws the most shots, you know. So part of it makes you feel like, okay, maybe he's throwing shots because he feels like he's a Steeler, but he's also not involved. Um, but that's why he's on the most shots because he know he's not around. He ain't got to face that music. That too. That he, too. But it's at like, this point, he's a talking head on TV. And what what do they do? You know, they throw shots at people. Yeah, and the but, thing about it is like we, we we joke about people or whatever, but it's like never personal. Like, like that was personal, man. Like you got on national TV and called him a cheerleader. What does he do? It was so personal, and it was it was uncalled for for one and for two. Yo, my man, like they, they just won the division again. Yeah, I mean, like I, I, I go back and forth because, of course, I'm like, okay, if that's how you feel, that's what you mean. Say what you feel. But you know, when they asked him immediately afterwards about Cower, you know, what I'm saying he was really complimentary of him. Yeah. And, and Tomlin has always been in that spot. Like, you know, I've been reluctant. I'm not even going front. I've been reluctant to give him full props, you know, throughout his coaching tenure because. You know, he was kind of handed a good team, but there's been moments in that in that tenure where, okay, this team that he was handed, they did what they did then. The team lost that spark, wasn't good, and now they're good again. So you have to give him 
crazy. And, and if they and end up winning the Super Bowl now, what are you going to say about that? There's and, nothing and, you're going to call him a cheerleader guy? And that's why I, I, I think I picked them too in the Super Bowls. But here's my thing, though. And they're a different team. They're not even like a like a defense first team under under him as opposed to Cowher. But and that's the thing. Like I, I understand that whole sentiment because I I thought about that too. Like did he win with Cowher's team? And it's hard to do that because if you do that, then you gotta say Gruden also won with Dungey's team, and you can uh, you can go down the line and like you know do that with right. a lot of coaches. Um, the but one I thing bet I you if you ask Terry about Gruden, he'll probably say Gruden's genius or something. Yeah, exactly. And the it thing, might, the it thing might have I been some of that about, other stuff involved in that, but you know, I ain't gonna bring. Yeah, that. the one thing I do know about sports is it takes a lot to win a championship in any sport, and the season is a grind, and you need cer- a certain level of luck to be honest with you to win a championship, and a certain level of things is breaking your way. Um, so I would never want to diminish what he's done over a 16 game season winning a championship by saying that was Cowher's team, because I mean. As long as Coward coach, he only got one chip. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So technically, Tom is already just has as many chips as him. He's got more 10 win seasons than anybody in the league, probably has ever Bella chip. And when you talk about cheerleaders, what does Terry Bradshaw think about Rex Ryan? Um, <laughs> and, and you know, it's so many other coaches that like aren't don't don't have the credentials that say he has. Um, right. and, and that's the thing. You cross the line when you start talk, calling a man a cheerleader, like. Uh, what more did you want him to do? Now he could say, well, he doesn't. He hasn't won a playoff game um, in a while, and you know he has a. He said he hasn't won one in five years when he was talking, but it's like, how do you just ignore the fact that he's won a Super Bowl? Though you just yeah. go to the period that you want to talk about, but that's not yeah. his entire coaching tenure. That's so you can't not just skip that. Work. Yeah, and at he won the end a of the, playoff game the day, in the last five years, but he won at, a Super Bowl like at before the end that. Of the day, at the end of the day, there's only one team at the end of the season who will have that championship. You're like, so if if you feel that way about him, what do you feel about Marvin Lewis? I mean, you know, you know what I'm saying? Like, I kind of, I kind of like, I kind of want to see Pittsburgh win now. I do too. <laughs> they, they, my squad ain't in it. My squad ain't in it. So you know, I'm right. technically I'm you know, Pittsburgh. I, but at, the, at this point, at this point in the NFL season, I can always just hitch on to somebody else. Yeah, um, but my thing. I, is, I know you're not used to that, but <laughs> I can always just go is, ahead and hit you on it. Listen, though, it was a long period. I was I was used to that, man. You got to understand, man. It was like Elway, and you know, it was it was some dark days in between that. But listen, though. Um, <laughs> uh, but my point my point is that um, you know, I'm I'm definitely rooting for him at this point just to see you know uh, Terry E. Crow. Uh, but like yo, and I like Tomlin's response because before he said what he said about Hollywood Henderson and the subliminal bars. He basically said, "Yo, well, I'm not a great coach." He said, "I'm I'm working hey. at it." He was like, "Outside yeah, of he was Belichick like, you got Popovich. Belichick and you got Popovich, yeah, <laughs> yeah, like we all working at it, like in in this, yo." So he's very he's very aware. So I give him credit for that because when I thought about, I started thinking about and think about it, I was like, they might only be the two like, you know, greats, great coaches, and all of us. You know what about I magic. thought about too What's that? when he when he said that. Because, you know, even though they don't play each other a lot, but because of the 70s and the rivalry that was formed between Pittsburgh and Dallas, I was kind of wondering if any petty Pittsburgh Steelers fans got upset because he, you know, admitted that he was a Cowboy fan back in the day. Like, forget the Hollywood Henderson line and all that kind of stuff. I guarantee you there were some people that just radared in on the fact that arguing with a former Steeler, he talked about how he was a Cowboy fan. Mm-hmm. So I wonder how many letters Pittsburgh's organization got to fire Tomlin the morning after these comments. <laughs> Listen, man, the one thing I recognize about uh, life is you're never going to be able to please everybody. So there's some, like, diehard uh, Steelers fans who are old as hell hanging on who are, like, Terry Bradshaw fans who probably, uh, you know, coming along his side. Um, in our chat room, Shot the Shadow Warrior, he said Tomlin's the motivator, not a real X's and O's guy. And that's probably right. true. Um, but at the yeah, same time, because the players love him. You, you look at it, he's one of those coaches. I guess the cliche is players coach because the players love him. You know whether he's an X and O genius or not. You know those guys want to play for him, and that that take that that can take you a long way because no, it, because teams, it's a talent in that. If you if you can, right, we've if, seen if, teams where they didn't really care for the coach. Like a lot of teams go through the motions, you know, trying to get people fired, but they 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 seem to love this. Guy. It's like a, and, and he'll jump on the field and trip somebody for. <laughs> it's one of those things man. Like, about that life. When you, when you run a professional sports team, uh, essentially you're a manager. You're a manager of people. Now some guys get over involved. You're Andy mm-hmm. Reid, who want to be the X's and O guys as well as the manager. 
Um, and some guys are just good managers. Uh, and if you can put the right – put it like this. There's a management book called From Good to Great by Jim Collins, and he talks about putting the right people on the bus. If you're a great manager, a leader of men or people, what you want to do is – Surround yourself with people who can be the X's and O guys. So mm-hmm. he's obviously been able to do that because you know the organization has helped him do that. So and and I see people using that as a way to criticize him. Look at the assistant coaches he's got. Like you can't knock okay. someone for like working for a first class organization. He's doing his job. You know, like he's but doing his I job. But really, who wins without great assistant coaches? You, know, you exactly. I mean, Belichick was an assistant to Parcells, who many consider the greatest of all time. Um, yeah. I mean, he's the know, closest thing because so far, you know, they have their thing in New New England, and you know, they've been not even just players; they've been plugging, playing coaches for the last decade, and they stay successful. So that might be the only place where, okay, you know, I, I know he's had some great assistants throughout the time. You know, a lot of mm-hmm. team head coaches college and in the NFL, but they seem to replace coaches just as well as they replace players. So mm-hmm. it's just something different that, that goes on in New England, but you can't win without other good people around you. There's no person. Yeah, that's, that's, a football that, team is too big for one person to be that's in, life. That's not even in charge of that's every life. single thing. Right. I don't care right. what you do. In life, you can't win without good people around you. Like In life, in business, and in any part of your life, you need good people around you, man. So with that being said, man, he fired back, gave his bars to Bradshaw. Um, you know, I found that interesting. I thought it was a, a good story to see the old and the young, quote-unquote, clashing. But um, speaking of great coaches, Phil Jackson and Jeannie Buss decided to call off their four-year engagement. Um, they talk wow. about uh, distance, distance being a problem. Yeah. Now, the reason this is relevant, because, you know, people probably ask me, like, why do you care? I, I don't care about Phil Jackson and Jeannie Buss's relationship. Um, but this asks, the the question is asked all the time, like, because they were, you know, still so tight, like a lot of people in New York felt that Phil Jackson may not have been there for the long haul, because once they got Jim Buss out of the way, people just felt that he would ultimately end up back in L.A. Um, yeah. Do you think – because I, I don't know if that was true one way or the other. You know, only Phil and Jeannie and, you know, whoever they worship knows that kind of stuff. But mm-hmm. let's say that there's something to that. Do you think the fact that they broke up, do you think that shuts that all down? I do. Um, because yep. if she's like most – I, let me not say that because I mean I don't want I don't want the, um. So by you saying you, by you saying you you she you do that must mean that you think she Petty Murphy. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Because <laughs> you wouldn't bring an eleven time champion back because you ain't Petty Roosevelt. Anymore. Listen, man, Petty Roosevelt, <laughs> man. Listen, man, you know she unstable creature. Anyway, but um, no, I, I think it, I think it's over, man. But I was saying the thing about it, like Phil is the man because when you got like New York and L.A. clamoring for your services, you got to be the man. Like you know, yeah. a dude from Montana who somehow became uh, you know one of the elite coaches in sports history. Um, you know, it's interesting. Although the job he's doing with the Knicks, they're probably trying to get rid of him at this point. Yeah, Montana though is nothing to do but film study. Um, <laughs> A lot of yammage going on now. The film study while eating a bison burger. But um, I, I don't know. I mean, because like you said, they kind of cited long distance as one of the reasons. So he gets fired by the Knicks at some point because they keep going this way. It's going to happen. It'll no longer be distance. So, you know, if that's the real case, come on back out to L.A., run this team, get married. Who knows, man? Who knows? But I'm pretty sure the people in L.A. want that. I mean, people in L.A. wanted Phil back when they ended up hiring, you know, Mike D'Antoni and some other jabronis. So, uh, shout out to Phil and Jeannie, whatever they're going to do. But yeah, I'm, I'm just interested to see how and what's going to play out basketball-wise with this whole story. Listen, uh, speaking of basketball, that's like a nice segue. But anyway, Trevor Ariza, he waited outside of a locker room to confront um, – Medry uh, the other day, um, you know, to see if he was about that life. What's up with uh, this? Is like the old Derek. Derek homie used to do this all the time. Like wait for players outside the yeah. locker room. And you know, your 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 homie do this. Um, 
besides driving 90 miles, he waits outside locker rooms and stuff like that, too. <laughs> uh, Matt Barnes. Yeah. It seems like a Matt Barnes move right here. Trevor Ariza said that Salah said something about his wife and kids during the third quarter of, I don't know how many of you out there saw this game. This was a very t- testy game between the uh, the Rockets and the Mavericks the other night. Uh, Houston got the win, 123 to 107. Uh, I think this game was back on like Tuesday night. Uh, within the game, I think there was something like eight technical fouls, two flagrant fouls, and, and, and somebody got ejected. So the the Rockets players in the interviews after the game, you know, including Harden, they were saying that the Mavericks was just being really disrespectful that night. And I guess it came to a head with Trevor Ariza. But the the alleged culprit says just there's two sides to every story, and I never said anything about his family. So it was one of those stories, like, is Trevor Ariza making this up, you know, so he can look less petty because he want to get at the dude, or is the dude just lying because he doesn't want to get that reputation? Who knows, man? But you this, know, this, this game was real testy. You had Patrick Beverly, who didn't even play in the game. He's yelling at uh, uh, Rick Carlisle, the coach of the Mavericks, after the game. He's like, everybody's going at it. I guess we were like two steps away from another malice in the palace. Like it was crazy. <laughs> yeah. Did uh, someone tell uh, one of the coaches like, "Yo, your son is trash." <laughs> Shout out to Penny. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, that's funny that you bring that. I'm because I'm, somebody tagged me in that video early this week, so that that caused me like when we were talking about that other thing in the war room sports group me um, about the kid who pointed to the half court line and shot the, the, yeah, the yeah. three like that yeah. other story. And, and that, like that caused me to say what I said about, I'm seeing a lot of young kids with talent these days that are real assholes. Yeah, <laughs> like, and, um, it's one thing, it's one thing to have talent, but I think like your asshole, them shouldn't come out until, you know, you at least make the lead. Like these dudes are in high school. Like, yo, some people's career can go. Like, Yo, it, it's crazy, right? And, and you know, I know that uh, George Carl, uh, Furious George, talks about this in his book, how AAU is messing messing up the game. But some dudes, like I've heard, dudes literally don't even want to make a league no more. They just want to be AAU stars, and then like you yeah. know, figure it out after that. Like that's like their ambition. Like they don't care about the league. Like so, and essentially they're treated that way though. Because when you when you become I'm about like, to say they pay. yeah, you become a star, you're treated special. You know what I'm saying? Like. And they're real a holes, but some of these dudes, man, like yo, they must be born with like personal trainers, man. It's that one kid I can't think of his name, but six boy, nine boy, kid. Like, yeah, like come on, man, like yo, man, he's like a sixteen year old Charles Barkley in his physical prime. Yeah, <laughs> he looked like he looked like a Julius Randle if he could play. But anyway, um, <laughs> <laughs> what's what's crazy though is uh. That story about the Penny John, that was hilarious, man. Yo, he trash. Like, <laughs> he called the son trash. And the funny but, thing um, is, you know, Penny's son's team won that game. Yeah, I know, I know. The dude I know. getting all the press for telling. I mean, homie has 33 points, but, you know. He's he a five star recruit, too, but I think he signed. He said he signed with Alabama. Like, why? Um, <laughs> yes, he, Wrong probably sport, already got, he, he probably already got a bag. <laughs> Wrong sport. <laughs> Yeah. Anyway, oh, well. man. Yeah, like you said. Oh well. Moving on to another story that happened while you were on the grind. Let's talk about what's going on up in Buffalo. The Buffalo Bills. I don't know what their expectations were, but obviously not what happened because <laughs> both Ryan brothers are out of here. And this is interesting to me, just because when he hired his brother, I was like, uh, they're gonna have to be tied at the hip because you can't just yeah. like have Rex fire his brother. So you got to give it to both of them. Yeah, that's why I, I, you know, I didn't even really sweat that part of the story because all week people have been talking about, oh, man, they fired both of them. But what really were they supposed to do? He brings in his brother. You know, I, I'm pretty sure some, some other people got fired, too. But you're only going to mention that because they're twin brothers. Um, what was Rex? Something like 15 and 16 in two seasons with Buffalo? Well, Rex like you said, the expectations. I mean, I guess they thought they had a little bit of – talent, you know, the defense was always supposed to be good, and then you bring in a Rex Ryan and a Rob Ryan, 
you expect the defense to be really good. They have some weapons on offense, but I never really think they settled on a good enough quarterback for the expectations to be where they were. I guess the, the organization is thinking, well, shoot, we paid uh, T-Mobile, so <laughs> if we paid him, this should be the quarterback that he can win with. Well, the crazy but, part um, is, like, a T-Mobile shows flashes of having talent, but when I watch them play, yeah, their play calling is horrendous. Yeah. Who's their OC? Because their play calling is horrendous. Like, but that's either here nor there. The bottom line of this is the Ryan brothers are out of here. It's going to be an interesting uh, New Year's celebration at their family house because uh, both got canned. I heard some rumors that there was some pressure, and there still is for the last week of the season, for the the interim coach to play uh, EJ Manuel. Um, I thought they, I thought that ship sailed, but I, I guess they want to check one last time to see if they have anything in EJ Manuel. Um, he I had a little bit of hype surrounding him when he came in, but he had a spark when he started, and now he just garbage. I, I actually hope they I thought about that too, but I don't even think he had a spark. I just think he had hype. <laughs> just for my entertainment purposes, I want to see that happen. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing else for no other reason. Yeah, stay yeah. out of here, man. Um, so you think this is Rex's? Ryan has Rob hasn't had one yet. I don't know if he'll ever get one, but do you think this is Rex's last stop as a head coach? Because at this I'm, point, I don't think he would even go backwards. Like it's probably either head coach or bus. But he was talking when he went to Buffalo, like he wanted this to be his last stop. But he probably thought it was going to be more than two years. He may take a top college job, and they'll probably do well there. Actually, he's the kind of guy that will probably mesh well with. With college athletes, yeah, because he's a I, troll. I, he's a troll and a savage, just like they are. But it's like even saying that at this point, I still can't see Rex Ryan coaching in college. If it's a big time mm-hmm. program, it's like damn near no difference. Like the thing about Harbaugh going to college is he took over Michigan, so it's like you know what I mean. Like like Rex ain't gonna Probably go back anymore. And, yeah, <laughs> I can see Rex Ryan. <laughs> I think Rex Ryan taking over a big time program in college football, winning a national championship, and then having it like removed a couple of years later because they found out he he broke so many uh, violations, committed so many violations. Like I could see that happening. Well, I guess we talked about the expectations. I guess it's because he set them up for himself because he did come in promising to end that playoff drought, and he said he wasn't going to let the fans down. But at the same time, he can go back now and say I didn't say it was going to happen mm-hmm. in two years. <laughs> I was gonna get you in the playoffs at some point. Like, give the Patriots some time, to, you know, to fall off. But people been much. waiting for that for a decade. These dudes won't. Oh, fall off. I keep passing on Tom Brady every year in fantasy because I'm like, one of these years, it's gonna be the year. It's gonna be the year I take a chance in draft, and he's gonna fall flat off the earth. I took Tom Brady one time, and he was terrible that year. He was a terrible fantasy quarterback that year. Of course, they still won games and all that, but. He wasn't putting up them MVP type numbers that he has like the last few years. Yeah. Shout out, shout out to HDH. Um. Yeah. So shout out to the Ryan okay. brothers back, back on the back market. To the, back to the AAU culture. Um, a top NBA player's agent asked TNT to keep their client off of shafting a fool. Now they said uh, this was uh, one of TNT's people said this on Twitter, what have you, and he said it was a top five player. That only leaves a handful of people. And I've seen speculation, right. right? Let's see. Top, I mean, top five, give or take. Arguable. Of course, you got LeBron. You got uh, KD, probably Westbrook, Steph, maybe James Harden. Like, can you see one of those guys being super I mean, sensitive? I mean, like like if, if there's a top five, right, it's probably eight people. That are right. considered top five. The reason I say that is because some people don't interchange them. So you probably want to bring in um, Unibrow. Um, brow. I don't see the brow being that sensitive. I don't think it like I like I had a discussion with somebody where they thought it's probably James Harden, but James Harden's been on it a lot for his defense. You know, he, matter of fact, he won like the he he beat out JaVale McGee. The trophy should be named after him, but he won the Shaq and the Fool MVP or something like that. You know, it's funny because I, um, I've um i been seeing the same thing. Everybody speculates it's Harden. Oh, it's, other people thinking it's Harden too? Yeah, I saw a lot of that. I saw a lot of that. Maybe the person that was saying it to me was just reading other articles and saying, I think it's Harden. 
Well, they, they, I mean, it's all speculation. No one knows. People, people are like, basically, they're doing the same thing we're doing now. They're looking at who are the, like, five or ten people that could be considered top five. Like, there's, there's probably, probably, like, you know, eight or ten people that is like, you know, these are the only ones you can even argue. Like, I saw Chris Paul on someone's list. Um, okay. You know, Melo was on someone's list. And, you know, the guys that you probably could throw in, but you could also throw off. So, but it's not that many players. So, I mean, LeBron in his tenure has showed – he's shown a little bit of sensitivity here and there. But I think at this point, his stature is is so huge. His, his legacy is so set in the league. I think he could have a good enough sense of humor to be on Shaq and the Fool without complaining. It's not doing anything to his pockets. It's not doing anything to his image. I, I really don't know who that could be, man. Yeah, you think it could be? You think it could be uh, Westbrook? I don't know. See, because Westbrook to me is two different people. On the court, I would say, Nah, Westbrook, he a killer. He ain't that sensitive. He don't care. He like Kobe. He don't care. But then when you see him afterwards, the way he dressed, like it could, definitely <laughs> <be him. laughs> it, could it could definitely be him post game. <laughs> I don't know, but I'm not going to sit here and, and lose sleep over it, but yeah, pretty much, somebody out there acting a little soft right now. Probably a good job getting ready to talk about, because Kevin Durant, um, after the Christmas Day loss, uh, and that game, by the way, was absolute fire. Like, yeah, I watch basketball here and there all, during the course of the season, you know what I'm saying? Um, and I'm not going to lie. getting some home cooking, too, from the rest. They definitely did, but that game, it's like with every sport, right? Like, these days, because you're an adult, you have so much going on, like, you'd be like, eh, whatever. But then that, you'll watch a game, football or basketball, and be like, this is why I love this stuff. That was one of those games. That game was, that game was dope game. Now, um, that's a game where you're like, man, I'm really looking forward to these dudes the playing again in the finals. You know what I'm yeah. saying? I'm really looking forward to that. It's, it's a shame that we're going to fast forward over the 80 million more NBA games there, there are to play with all of these teams. But it just makes you – because you know what the inevitable is going to be at the end of the season. So yep. let's just get it on already. You know what I mean? Yeah, well, shout out, <laughs> 2016, shout you should just go ahead and mark the, the rest of the NBA season. <laughs> yeah, shout, out to, shout out to Barry Irving for uh, doing his thing. Um, and for those that don't know, I call him Barry because you can just Google Kyrie Irving and Blood Gang and you'll see how Kyrie Irving be throwing up blood signs all the time. Um, yeah. We're not going to get into that. But shout out to Barry Irving. Barry, that dude, man. He's a yeah, clutch Barry dude, is definitely. Man. Barry is definitely uh, mm-hmm. cut from the Mamba cloth, but um, that gene. it was a dope, it was a dope game, and you know there were a lot of questionable calls down the stretch. Um, Ron dunked the ball and did like 15 chin ups, like he did like three sets of five, and didn't get called for anything. <laughs> yo, he was um, E.T. Fletcher and on the rim. Yo, I'm not, yo, I'm not. He said it's still yo mother. Anyway, but listen, there. I've never seen anyone do that to the rim. Like, I've never seen anyone draw that, that much. Yeah. Like, it was, I don't think I've seen that either. I mean, not in a live play and not get a technical foul call. Yo. There was no one under him. Like, that that was egregious. Like, the push on the on the final play with Durant, I saw the push, but it wasn't egregious. You can yeah, yeah. kind of understand why it wasn't called. Plus, Durant, you know, he's seven feet tall, but he weighs like 106 pounds. So you kind of think, all right, you could brush up against him and make him do that. At least that's what you think from the outside looking in. Because I hear he's much stronger than he looks. But at the same time, that wasn't egregious. Should it have been called? Yeah, of course. But to not call it technical on the on the that on the CT Fletcher chin ups on the rim. <laughs> I still your mother. <laughs> yo, <laughs> did three sets of five, yo. And, and, and the crazy part is, man. And I saw that. I'm like, yo. All right, you got to be kidding me. But with all that being said, Kevin Durant, he actually defended the referees when the Christmas Day lost. And, of course, LeBron followed because they are they already thinking about the finals. LeBron was like, no, he ain't getting no uh, – Yeah, no yeah, because Durant. Durant was out there looking for credit. He was out there – he was out there paying credit card bills, giving the refs who just screwed you out of a game, you know, all of this praise. So you're right, LeBron and his people probably yo, they like LeBron, you gotta get on that. You back him up on that. Cause when the finals come and and you know, these refs are gonna remember the praise that he heaped on them, even though they lost the game and it's gonna come down to, you know, 
some some kind of bang bang call between those two, and he's gonna get that call. But I have his um some of his his words because what happened was you know the NBA puts out this thing called the, the two minute report, and it basically it's it's when the NBA comes out apologizing about calls that were missed or calls that were made that shouldn't have been made, and. Durant basically said, because you know Durant, uh, the last two seasons he's been starting. He's starting to turn into that angry veteran who just goes into uh, um, press conferences and interviews, just saying whatever he wants, cursing on the mic all the time. So he said, "I think it's BS." You know, he said what he said. He said, "I think they should get rid of the uh, last two minute report." He said, "The refs didn't lose us that game. We lost that game. We could have been better." I think it's bullcrap that the NBA threw the refs under the bus like that. Um, I agree with him in the fact that I think the last two minute report, I think the league is throwing the refs under the bus because if there's nothing that could be done about it, then what's the use in coming out? And and if you're not, you know, yeah. the refs, as, far as we know, there's no system to hold refs accountable for anything like that. So what's the league's end game here? We're not going to give you any kind of penalty. We're just going to embarrass you. That should be enough. So what's, what's really the point of coming out and telling everybody that the refs made some bad decisions, the refs were wrong. Like, what's the point besides throwing them under the bus? Yeah, I'll, <laughs> so I never understood yeah. that either. All right. So he makes good points, but it, he, he was definitely kissing up a little something to the refs. So yeah. Shout out, shout out to K, KD for you know <laughs> strategically kissing the refs' boots <laughs> because he knows he's gonna need some referee help. Some Pretty assistance. much. As the season goes on, so all right. But anyway, man, tell the people who's having a birthday. I will do that. But Jim, you know we did. You know some congratulations are in order. Uh, some news broke earlier that you know we all talked about wasn't a part of our show outline today. But Serena Williams has announced her engagement to uh, Reddit co-founder Alexis Ohanian. Um, there was a big firestorm on social media about this whole thing. I'm not going to get into all that right now because it's, it's whatever, you know. Serena just broke the heart of a lot of black dudes out there in particular. Um, but shout out, congratulations. You got any, any, any words for Serena and Alexis? Who I hear is Armenian, so he's like the Man. female Kim Kardashian. Uh, uh, um, I know B. Austin is having a, a full out fight right now. Um, I'm gonna keep it a buck though. I'm not even gonna lie. Like, I was a little hurt by this, and there's a long history of why. But at the end of the day, man, life goes on, man. This is probably how the women felt when Tiger did what he did, Jordan did what he did. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But if I sit here and, and, and kept it a buck, if I sat here and didn't keep it a buck and say, I don't care, you know, I do, I care. You know what I'm saying? Yo, and um, just want to send a quick shout out to Aubrey because Aubrey is literally just going down like a, a young man's list that he makes like before he becomes famous and he's like following through. So salute to him for living every man's dream. All right, salute to the savage. <laughs> The dude, Aubrey. All right, so, yeah, we're going to let everybody know who's having some birthdays before we get into 2016, the year in review. And the birthdays are brought to you as usual by Digital Extreme Technologies. Do you or your business need a custom website? Well, for dynamic, professional, and most of all, affordable custom website solutions, you need Digital Extreme Technologies. No need to break the bank for an effective online presence, top quality results-driven websites at incredibly affordable prices. And, yes. You guessed it. Financing options are available. So visit digitalextremetech.com or call 267-205-4203. And for discounted rates, be sure to let them know that your homies from War Room Sports sent you. All right. My birthday. Yay! Celebrating a birthday today. Uh, Richie Sexton turns 42 years old. Uh I don't know why I thought Richie Sexton might have been a little bit older than that, but shout out to him. Uh, Theo Epstein. We always knew he was a young man. Shout out to Theo Epstein, who turns 43. Jay Fiedler, 
<laughs> he was he was granted, you know, some starting jobs in the league. Jay Fielder was yeah. supposed to be something at one point. Um, he nah, was never materialized. Yeah, yeah, never really materialized. But shout out to Jay Fielder on his 45th birthday. Uh, Saints coach Sean Payton turns 53 years old. Sean Payton is a, is a young coach. Um, shout out to him. Uh, Wayne Heisinga, CEO of the Miami Dolphins. He turned 79 years old, and we want to give a rest in peace shout out to the great middle linebacker, Ray. No, not not Ray Lewis. 2016, didn't take him. Uh, Ray Nitschke. He was born December 29th, 1936. He died 